He done had his shine. It's my time to shine. I'm already mad because you drafted me 51st. Like, this didn't have, this issue was bigger than TD. This issue was bigger than anybody. I'm mad you drafted me 51st. I walked out of your meeting because it was too late and y'all already had three, y'all had 3,000 yard backs on your, on, on your roster and you go and draft me. Let's go behind the mask. Welcome back to another special edition of the Behind the Mask podcast. I'm your host, Akio Spikes, joined alongside with my co-host, better known as your favorite plus size model, Tuton Reyes, in the building. And people, we have to acknowledge before we even get to the guest, like we know you could have, listen, you could have done anything you want to do today. A lot of people out of school, you're at home with your families, safe, coronavirus, everybody is scared. But you chose to take your time right now to listen to us. And that's the reason why we are not going to disappoint. I was next next guest hails from the great state of Mississippi. (laughs) But he attended Gainesville High School. Got a scholarship and all of that. Attended this little place that we like to go to the bottom. It's called the U University of Miami. I was interested to find out that, too, this man became the second freshman starting running back for UM since 1975. Set a record of five 100-yard performances and led the team with 838 yards, eight touchdowns, 143 carries in 10 games. He was so great at the University of Miami that he was inducted into UM Sports Hall of Fame back in 2014. He took his talents to the draft. Pick 51st overall, second round, to the Denver Broncos. Set all kind of records there. Mm -hmm. Then he was traded to the Washington Redskins. That's where me and him had our encounter. Can't wait to tell you about how that ended up because this young man has amnesia sometimes, but that's okay. He set a bunch of records. We'll get into him, but he played for the Skins from 2004 to 2010. Listen, I want y'all to give it up to my dog, one of my all-time favorites and all-time favorites coming out of the U. Give it up for Clinton Earl (laughs) Gordon! Hey, too. I'm not the middle to name. Yeah, I'm <laughs> talking to you. I'm done with him already. He dropped the middle name on you, bro. I get to burn him up. That's all. Flame. I get to burn him up. Burn him. Burn him up. What's happening, Earl? <laughs> I just asked how I was saying, bro. I just when I saw it, I was like, Earl. Listen. Okay. I'm gonna give you that. One. Okay. You got it. Okay. So you want me to stay off of that? I nah, got you. You good? <laughs> we done put it out to the world. Now you good? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I appreciate that, man. So, listen, we, we appreciate the time you've given us today. You come in and out of the city, and uh, we respect that, man. What, what, what's going on with you? Man, first off, I just had to fly in to come do this show because you all ignored me. I called you Ooh. all about doing the show. Ooh. They were in, you all were in Miami. I reached out to Spikes, like, bro, I want to come on the episode while y'all doing Super Bowl. He played me, he said, man, we got corporate sponsors. Oh, oh, this guy, he man. Said, man. He said, man, we got corporate sponsors. I'll I, get you another time. I Let's set it up for another time. Let's set it up for another time. I didn't get that memo, bro. I didn't even, I didn't even bother to reach out to you. <laughs> I was crushed. Damn, what had happened I, was. <laughs> that's why I didn't even want to talk to y'all when I saw y'all out. I was still hurt. But we were celebrating. We was, we was celebrating. We were celebrating Edge getting inducted to the Hall of Fame. Yeah, you know? That's what we were celebrating. Right, right. But our relationship. Everybody was celebrating Edge, but right. I'm just saying our relationship was different. Well, why didn't you tell me? I would have, you know, I would have tried to. I just left it alone, man. I just had to go to this. This it was the corporate thing, and I had. I hey, think I, we I here now. My boy, when my boy reached out to me, I've you never did. put him off. Yeah, that's a fact. anytime he's ever reached out to me. Fact. You that's see what I'm saying? I've never put him off. I drop what I'm doing, but he put me off. He just. Mm. I said, Damn. How dare you? Hey, don't you know you what say I was that. thinking? I said, man, Toot can't know this. So no I don't even way. blame you. I know I'm Spike, it. so it's all good. Listen, listen, man. So <laughs> there's only one rule on the Behind the Mask podcast. There are no rules. 
So we're going to go in. Pardon him for, uh, you know, not coming through when in a timely fashion in your own backyard. I can't count on him. <laughs> can't win with him. Can't, can't win, win with him. Can't coach him. I can't him. win with this guy. Can't win with him. Speaking of coaching, the, the lack of not coaching, how does this <clears> – this is what was funny, not even funny to me, but it kind of broke my heart. Last night, it was declared. Mm. It broke my heart when I saw this and when I saw them going in this way. The NBA not only stopped a few games, but canceled the entire season until otherwise. That hurt me because I feel like, like I know you are big sports fans and you love watching NBA. We even had some conversations in the past about who's the coldest. But it's like, it hurt me so bad because it's like, what else do I supposed to damn watch? Baseball is about to be, well, it's canceled. Yeah. So when you see the NBA, this virus is scaring everybody, right? But the moment you see it interfere with big business, which is NBA, MLB, college basketball, uh, sports, period. The moment that you see uh, this virus interfere with big business, when they start canceling games and moving games and delaying and no fans in the stands uh, for you to play, you know it's something serious. So I, I, I would suggest that everyone – really take this serious and just wash your hands. You shake somebody's hand, you touch anything, wash your hands, like be prepared. You yeah. know, you can't yeah. ignore it and go all day, eight, nine, 10 hours without. I wash my hands all the time anyway, you know, because I see y'all go in and out of the bathroom Without washing y'all hands, and then you try to give me dap. I'm like, man, like fist bump. You know what I call you. <laughs> <laughs> like, nah, so Chuck the deuces I, yeah, I'm I'm washing my hands anyway. That's crazy, man. And and back to when we played. I know you were in college at the time. Dating myself a little bit, but <clears throat> the only thing that, the only two things that I re- recall that stopped the NFL from from going was uh, labor relations. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And then 11 So for the NBA to be stopped that's that's heavy what, what how would you feel if you were actually still you know suiting up and everything and you know you got the fans obviously we play the game for the fans for our family how would you feel if you were playing right now and they say you we chopping up the season I, I mean i just would think this sucked because you're talking about lebron look at the season that lebron is yeah. having uh at this stage that's hard to duplicate if mm. if you're not mvp it's a premature season uh, that's hard to duplicate. How do you get that season back? You know, uh, if you're on a quest for a championship ring, the mindset, the mood, you know, teams are just starting to gel and come together. You, like basketball really don't get serious until after the All-Star, yeah. you know, and guys lock in and you start to see the run and everything happening. All of a sudden, your season is cut prematurely. Now, when they say pick back up, you know what I mean? Like, just say who was who was on fire Going into yeah. it, somebody averaging 30, 40 points a game on fire in his zone, you don't pick back up there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think it's a huge drop off. It sucks for for um, all the players, even March Madness. You know how many guys get drafted off of March wow. Madness yeah. performance? Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I think that's the biggest hit uh, in all of sports because you wait for your moment, your team, the Cinderella team, to go out and knock off uh, uh, like the David and Goliath story. The Cinderella team to go out and all of a sudden you get a household name, you see a John Morant, you find those guys mm-hmm. who didn't get exposure uh, while in college. But all of a sudden on, on this stage where the entire world is paying attention, you become a household name. You don't get that story this year. And that's always a feel-good story. That Cinderella story, when you're sitting pulling for the underdog or you see this guy go into his own and take over and dominate a team, you're like, man, you know, you look at Walter McCart. Uh, McCarthy when they knocked off Kentucky. Kentucky, You know what I mean? Like, you don't get to find those teams anymore. You don't get to see that. And it sucks for those guys because they didn't perform on the stage. Now your draft status and no Mm -hmm. one knows you. No one knows, like, you got that dog in you, which is missing in a lot of people in sports. And when you look across the board, we both got friends and you go online. Wow. Wow. Man, flights to London right now. <laughs> a couple of hundred dollars it's for a stack. You get to sit in business class. And so, like, I call it the young millennial syndrome. Like, they're fearless. They don't feel like it applies to them. Do you? I guess, I, I guess I'm posing this in this form. When you see all of that bait out there, because they these big corporations and companies know we got to cover expenses. Yeah. 
at least at the minimum, you know. So we people want to try. Do you think it's I'm a little premature? Bait. I'm not taking that bait. It's it's not even because worth the you tra- you like to travel a lot. I love to travel. You know, I love to travel. We cross paths in different countries all the time. But I'm not taking that bait. You know what I mean? This is just one of those situations, especially over there. You know, you don't know the health care. You don't know the doctors. Uh, if you get sick somewhere else, it's hard to go find you a doctor. Maybe they don't understand you. You know what I mean? So in those countries, you look at Europe, I think it's actually being suspended uh, yeah. on Friday. So travel yeah. to Europe is actually being suspended. So it's not worth the risk. This is where... The stories that you wanted to get to, going to Miami and yeah. Vegas and, you know, L.A., San Diego, you start experiencing everything within the United States. But you got to avoid, you know, you got to avoid certain places, the Bay Area, Seattle, like those places that, that has the breakouts. You don't want to go. You can't go to New York. You know what I mean? So I think it's just best to sit home. Stop. Mm-hmm. Just sit down. This is the, the perfect time for everybody to take a break. Just sit sure. down and relax. Take a deep breath. Catch up with your family. See what's going on. Like, just relax. You know what I mean? And stop. It's going to drive you crazy. It's, it's like a ball player's mentality. You know, the moment that we have to sit still, it's you get into it's all kinds of trouble. Antsy, right? Yeah, you can't. Yeah. You just can't take it. It's like you snow days. You know, you snowed in. You can't go outside. You're standing in the window. And vroom, vroom. <laughs> like, you just want to get outside, but you can't. So, just sit still, you know, wait till they find out. At least wait for them to have a cure. Well, on the flip side, not even the flip side, I agree with you. But I do think about testing the waters a little bit. Vince Carter, he came out and I was I hated to had to it may end like this, but he came out and said, you know what, this possibly could be my last game because they had they had, he heard rumors before the game that they was contemplating on canceling the season. So do you think he got his due diligence, his farewell, his true farewell? He came out, mind you now, he came out of high, we came out of high school together. We both got in the league together. I played 15 years and he just finished 22. My so, goodness. So y'all both came out in the 80s, uh, <laughs> which, which puts you at a point. I used to enjoy watching y'all play. I used oh, to enjoy man. watching y'all play as a kid. But how you think we, you got out? <laughs> you saw all of this great. We gave you hope. Hey, listen, you Vince welcome. Carter is a is a dog. You know what I mean. And for him to even still be in the NBA, and uh, you know, you see a lot of guys get that farewell that farewell tour when they get to ride off into the sunset. I think Vince Carter had that farewell tour for the last three or four years. years right? You know what yeah, I mean? Because. Yeah. Every year it was like, is Vince going to retire? If it, is Vince going to retire? But just him being a leader within the locker room, you know, with with him being able to guide these young boys, be able to pass the knowledge that he has down to Trey Young, who's taking over this city. Like, Trey Young got this city on fire. Yeah. You know what I mean? Anybody who come here to play the Atlanta Hawks don't want no issue with that young boy. You know what I mean? So it's great to see, but you always got to look. Trey Young get the headlines. But at the end of the bench, you got a guy in Vince Carter who's been there, who's been the superstar, who's kept Trey Young out of trouble, who's given Trey Young the game, and that's what you want out of star players. So I think Vince Young got got his just due, even if it's premature. You know, he don't get the wave on the last game and everybody come up and give him a hug. But I think the last three or four years been his farewell tour. Who was that guy for you when you got in the league? Uh, you got drafted, you got veterans. Uh, and back when we got drafted, well, you got drafted, I should say, there were there was more of a veteran presence in the locker room. You know what I'm saying? So who was that guy that kind of so, took you under your wing? So for me, what's wing? crazy is going to Denver, getting drafted to Denver had to be the best thing that ever happened. You know, for one, it was a humbling experience because I felt like I should have been third pick in the draft. Yeah, yeah. And so it was a humbling experience. I go to Denver. That was a year removed from winning the Super Bowl. So the guys that – the guys took me in. Like, you know, those guys embraced me – and covered for me so much that it taught me how to be a pro. When you're talking about Shannon Sharp, Rod Smith, Ed McCaffrey, Brian Greasley was a great leader, if you ask me, Uh, Steve Berline, you know, who was the backup quarterback. These guys did everything together. You know, Terrell, um, Al Wilson. Al Wilson is one of my favorite players. You know, Mm -hmm. Al Wilson has always been one of my favorite players. So to be able to witness – these guys and how they moved and how they carried themselves. You know, they did everything team-oriented. 
Uh, they supported everything. So all of a sudden, when I when I go be the head guy, you know, when I when I become uh, the, the head honcho in in D.C., it was easy to take guys under my wing. You know, it was easy to say, hey, you can stay at my crib. You know, you undrafted. I know I know your situation. You don't need to grab an apartment. Hey, come stay over here. You know right. what I mean? Like, yeah. all y'all done stayed at my crib. You know what I mean? So you just open the doors and you take guys under and you try to just show guys the ropes or, or show guys, like, give guys love to say, hey, whatever you need, whatever you need to know. You know, people lead by in different ways. You know, some people vocal. Some people, you know, James Thrash would be – my ideal teammate, you know, James Thrash, which a lot of people wouldn't know, but when James Thrash spoke, you know what I mean? If it's somebody who could talk to me to get me to understand I'm slipping or I'm doing wrong, James Thrash, London Fletcher, Chris Samuels, you know what I mean? When you look at guys like that who carried themselves, they did it on and off the field, and they were guys you respected. They were clean-cut guys. They stayed out of trouble. So those are the guys that go, you know, London Fletcher don't get his just due. Hunter Fletcher, yeah. bad man. You know what I mean? Uh, Chris Samuels, premature. Yeah. His 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 career ended prematurely. Yeah. And then you know having guys Sean T and Santana who could always pull you. You know what I mean? Like who gonna always be honest? Because we came you know we came up through the mud together. Right. So these guys are always gonna shoot you straight. So mm -hmm. having those guys around you, it was a great mix. It was a good balance. So you never got way up here because Sean Santana. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And even if you got out, Chris, Fletch, somebody would always say, you know what, CP, come here. You yeah. know what I mean? Put put their arm around you and get you right. What's the most memorable time that one of them, one of them had to reel you back in because they felt like, all right, come on, bro. You messing well, up. Because we, we <clears throat> talk about that all the time, just the accountability piece of, like, what it means to have that accountability. Well, brother. I think in Denver, man, I was a loose cannon, <laughs> you know, and that's just real talk because yeah. I'm 20. I was the youngest player in the NFL my first two years. You know what I mean? Millionaire. So I only got 800000 So hey. I was close. I was 1000 there. But look, <laughs> <laughs> so I got in Denver just not knowing. You know, you don't know how to be a professional. And I go from Miami to Denver. So I'm, I'm cool. You know, somebody offered me the opportunity. Hey, CP. We're going to give you a private jet to go down and check out UM in, in Arizona in, in the game, but you have a party at our place. Cool. I'll do it. Where your place at? Oh, we got a little cabaret downtown Denver. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, I'm down. Coach called me in back into the office after I used this plane to go down and say, Clint, what are you thinking? I said, man, what you talking about? They got a billboard on – 470, the main highway. In Denver. In Denver. They got a, whatever the highway is, they got a billboard advertising me hosting a party at, the at a gentleman's club. <laughs> <laughs> so Coach Shanahan called me. In I the remember office. that though. Coach Shanahan called me in the office. I'm like, man, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? He's like, they got a billboard with you on <laughs> Like, bro, this is what happened. They offered me the jet yeah. to go down to see UM play. In exchange, I do a party at 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 their venue. Right, right. That's what we agreed upon. I didn't know they was putting a bill the biggest billboard. This billboard was like overlooking Invesco, <laughs> so everybody gets to see it. So it was just like learning little yeah. things. But you know what made it easy was Shannon Sharp or Rod Smith. Like coach, he didn't know. You know what I mean? Like we got him. or bro, you got to take that. Out. You can't do that. You know, um, my best game. I felt like one of my best games of my career. Shannon Sharp was my savior because I was going to tell coach I can't play. I didn't drink in season. <clears throat> we had we had a rookie night mm. on Friday night. I was still drunk Sunday when the game came. Dang. That's how crazy our rookie night was. Damn. And That's I'm at the stadium. Game. I'm getting ready to walk into – that's coach office. I'm getting ready to walk into coach office and say, coach, I can't play under these conditions. <laughs> And Hold on. <laughs> under your condition? Yeah, I can't. I can't you were about to take your butt in there and say I didn't that? No, it's not knowing. Yeah. But I was actually about to go in and say, Coach, I can't play. This is what's wrong with me. Shannon Sharp stopped me and said, CP, what you doing? I guess he saw me like I wasn't yeah. my usual self. He said, Man, what you doing? I said, I, I can't play in this game. He said, Oh, no. That ain't. That ain't an no, that, yeah. ain't, that ain't an option. Like, that's not that has nothing to do with coach. You got to get ready. So he was like, 
And what you need to do is go outside, sprint, run 110s so you can get that out your system, throw it up, come contrast whirlpools, hot, cold whirlpool, mm -hmm. and get ready for the game. So I go out, I think I ran like 14 110s. Before a game? Before the game. I'm sprinting, sprinting down the sideline to throw up, come hot, cold whirlpool, right? I'm like, I don't know what I'm about to do. Best game I had. I go hit Arizona like 238, two touchdowns, last game of the season. Like we were out of the playoffs. Mm -hmm. We had got eliminated earlier. So I feel like that was the best game I ever had. After I ran 14 one tens, <laughs> I still went out and ran for 200 yards. But that, but that's the the part that the people don't really get. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to you, – you're held accountable – by the vets and you have to go out there and do your job regardless so that means that the broncos was relying on you to come through you know even though you didn't make the playoffs they're relying on you to do your thing yeah but i just think as a young player like if you don't know that I, that was a simple mistake that i'm actually about yeah. to make to go tell the coach hey coach i'm, I'm yeah, you drunk can't. yeah you, you know what i mean that. like you can't do that right. and i got to be more responsible although it was friday night that's on me you know what I mean? Yeah, That's yeah. on me. So it was just learning accountability. And, and you learn what you can and you can't deal with. You know, a lot of guys put themselves in positions. You know, if you hear the OLT stories of Allen Iverson, you know how many times I've seen Allen Iverson out mm -hmm. before a game that he hit 40 or 50 points in? Like, I see Allen Iverson, he can't stand up. Like, hey, I, like you good? Yeah. Next night you're going out. Next night? That's at four or five in the morning. That night he go in. <laughs> that night he go in. Like, That's that basketball man. lifestyle, though, bro. Man. It's just it's different. Like yeah. if if it's in you, if that dog is in you to yeah. go out and and play, it's nothing gonna take that away from you. It's nothing that can take that edge away from you. To your point, I did that one time, and I wasn't as bad. As, I was nowhere near as bad as what you said. But I went out, got lit. That Friday night, the next day I came back in, it was just like I felt drained. That was the first time I ever did it. And, you know, I had um, one of my teammates, Willie Anderson. Mm. He was like, Spice, what? My God, what's wrong? <laughs> That's what he said. I never forget that. I was like, bro, I had one too many. I'm hurting right now. He was like, listen, this is what you need to do. Took me in the steam room. I got there early. Boom, boom, got it in. Then I went and got an IV to make sure I was still hydrated. Mm. That's even makes your story even that much more impressive, bro. You you could have risked you could have risked it all just by pulling yeah. something because you were dehydrated. You could, but at that time when you're young, like you're young and dumb, you don't even know. Like I'm putting myself in this position, mm -hmm. and just for your story, I think that's an excuse. Y'all might have been playing us. I think Denver was playing the Bengals. When this happened, and that was your excuse from not being able to stop me. Since you want to talk about <laughs> crazy. that was your excuse Run from it. not being able Run to it. stop me because I hit y'all up for like one thirty, and y'all was supposed to have a good defense, bro. Yes, bro. My rookie bruh. year or my my second year in the league, bro. Google. Run it. Two thousand two. Yes, two thousand two. Oh shit! Let me go to the Google. Pull, pull it, it up. up. Behind yeah. the mask. Hey, pull it up. You pull see, it up. You we just, we, you we see about Spikes to find running out right all now. big. <laughs> Look, you see Spikes running all big trying to catch me. It wasn't a chance. He didn't have a chance. It wasn't nothing hey, personal. I could, run, I could run with you, though, Doc. Run with who? You. Mm. <clears throat> I'm not, I ain't saying the whole field. I'm just saying. In the box. If, if you, tw 25 yards, there's no way you getting away from it. Period. Well, when you pull up this video, you're going to see in five yards I got away from it. No, you will see it. Pull it to what we got over there. Hold you on. But I, I, now I got it's some highlights and all of that. Just oh, no. Week 13? No, 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 no. Bengals Bronx. Yeah, week 13. No, nah, that ain't it. That's 18. We'll, we'll, we'll get back to it. We'll get back yeah, to yeah. it. I want, he ain't had no 130 yards, Man, though. Listen, you I only stayed. had over 100 yards one time when we played Man, against listen, each other. Buffalo, when you first went to Buffalo. No, that was, no. It was when I was in Philly. I dump, I demolish y'all in Philly. At we, Philly. Did y'all win? It don't matter. You didn't stop me. Win, we didn't have to. What you mean you didn't have to? We got the one, we got the dub. We served out them L's, dog. We both know the the mismatch that that was. <laughs> right? We both know the mismatch. But when it came to the dominant player on the field, I was victorious. 
Bruh. I can't help. I can't help what everybody else is doing. That's the story I of my to, life. I got to go out and get me me. That's the story. But it leads to, I personally think you were underrated even coming out of college. It ain't and I, and my entire being, career. Your entire career. Why do you feel that way? I have my own thoughts, but being drafted 51st coming out of the U, I just thought you were slighted. But even after you got in and had so much success, over 1,500 yards rushing your rookie year, what what, what you think? So I feel like people give you just to people give credit to who they want to give credit to, right? And my entire career, high school, I was overlooked because everybody wanted me to play DB, and I switched to running back late in the game, junior, senior year. Junior year, I think I had 900 yards rushing. Nobody wanted to recruit me as a 900-yard back. Senior year, I had over 2,000 yards rushing. Everybody wanted to recruit me as a 2,000-yard back. But to me, you ain't been talking to me. Don't start now. Because I told you last summer what I was capable of. I get to college. Same thing. You know what I mean? Not having an opportunity. Willis was a higher-rated back. Frank was a higher-rated back. I was a starting running back. You know what I mean? Everybody went on to have great careers. But when we're in this locker room together, I'm on the field. You see what I'm saying? NFL, same thing. Orlandis Gary, Mike Anderson, Terrell Davis, Karan Coleman. We're all in the same room. All of those guys have a thousand yards rushing. I was the lead dog. I go to I go to Washington. I've been in the backfield with Sean Alexander, Larry Johnson, mm. Willie Parker, uh, and whoever else they Liddell Betts, um, TJ Duckett, whoever else they brought in for that situation. I was the lead dog. You see what I'm saying? Like, competition is what what moves me. Not getting that credit, not getting that just due to players. I feel like as players, you played against me. You know my work ethic. You know the dog that was in me. You know this was no easy defeat. And I always was the focal point. I've never played in a game that a team felt like, you ain't got to worry about CP. He's like, we, we don't have to game plan for him. Every game plan was game plan to stop me. I still perform. Getting credit for it for whatever reason. Hey, you don't like this team. You don't like me. You don't like what I stand for, whatever it is. I can't control that. But numbers don't lie. You know what I mean? Like top 30 all the time. It's been a bunch of backs. It's 30. How many teams in the NFL? 32? 32. 32. Yeah. 32. I'm, in, I'm top 30 all the time. That means 32 teams that's had all of these backs. I'm still top 30 all the time. I walked away from the game. I needed 20-something yards to become 10,000. 10, 10, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I needed 20-something yards, uh, 70 yards to become a 10,000-yard yard. And back. obviously you knew that when you walked away from the game. But I didn't know that was my last game. You see what I'm saying? Like, when it happened, I didn't know that was my last game. The lockout happened, and I was injured trying to recover. And once I recovered, it was just like, man, I can walk away from this. I was okay with walking away from that. So – you have so many, so many stories, but yet and still, when it come down to actual play, I can't name too many backs that gave you what I gave you. And I grew up a fan of Fred T. I grew up a fan of Corey Dillon. I grew up a fan of Edrin James. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I'm what Marshall Falk. When I'm watching these guys, I'm trying to be everybody. Like I'm I'm stealing from everybody to go out and take it and make it my game. You see what I'm saying? So when it came game day, they didn't want to see me. And the influence on other players, the influence, period, people don't give you that credit. Like, you speak of errors. You know, when AI came out, everybody wanted to be AI. You put the headband on, you got the braids, and LeBron, everybody yeah. wanted to be LeBron. You know what I mean? I feel like CP, everybody wanted to be CP. You look at the backs that's wearing 26, the influence throughout the NFL, you had to watch me. You had to watch it, whether you wanted to or not. Either you were rooting for me or you was mad because I was demolishing your team. No matter how mm. you look at it, you had to watch it. Man, that's cold, man. And then you you had, though, how did you keep that motivation when, and me going back to college right now, that you, you had Frank, you had Will, you talking about these guys that was ahead of you, Najee, all, these, all this NFL talent, and y'all all shine. But how did you keep your motivation to say, you know what, I'm going to separate myself, I'm going to be the one that everybody... Look well, out. I think 
I think the coaches did that. You you got to get credit. Coach Solinger was one of my favorite coaches to this day. Great man. Uh, Bobby Turner, one of my favorite coaches to this day. Great man. You look at the position that the coach puts you in. Coach kind of have to maintain all these attitudes. So me and Frankie G had an outstanding relationship. Me and Willis had a competitive relationship. Najee was one of those tweeners because they was asking him, like, hey, Najee, we need you to switch so we can let these three dogs eat. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And we got to go out and compete every day. And across from me is Ed Reed and Jonathan Vilma and DJ Williams and Chris Campbell and Philip Buchanan. You know what I mean? So I don't have a day to slack off. I don't have a day to let, you know, I can't let Andre Johnson down. I can't let Jeremy Shockey down. Mm. So I got to be ready. And if I'm not ready, then Willis is going to be in the game. And if Will is not ready, Frankie G going to be in the game. So I was always in that position my entire career, even in Denver. The first day they said, hey, Warren's walking to the huddle. Terrell put his helmet on. I put my helmet on. Damn. You said Warren's walking to the huddle. I'm walking into the huddle. So l- let me Dude, ask you this, hey, though. Hey, young boy, you crazy. No, I ain't crazy. That's my mentality. You said Warren's, <laughs> I'm a one. No matter how you look at it. But has that ever got you into a situation? To where you you and one of your fellow backs were about to fight because the because of the competitive nature. I'm with the smoke. Like I'm, I, I've always <laughs> been with the shit. It's like, it, you know, maybe it rubbed people the wrong way. You see what I'm saying? Like everybody not gonna be a fan. Some people gonna feel like you arrogant or whatever. So take my position. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Take it from me. And if I got a chance to fight, I'm I'm coming out victorious in the fight. I bite, scratch, claw, elbow, head, butt. Like, this <laughs> area, you hit somebody in the nose, I don't care how big you are, you right there. It's over. How would you know so, that, though? <laughs> ah, nah. Hey, be the dog in the fight. So you got to do whatever it takes. Like, you got to have that mentality. And some people, it's going to rub people the wrong way. I'm sure I rub people the wrong way. You look at, at TD, I think I rubbed TD the wrong way because I came in. I stated in the beginning, this is going to be my job. I'm not comfortable. Like I'm not cool because he's a Hall of Fame back and all the success that he had and he won Super Bowls. Y'all brought me here for a reason. I'm not taking a back seat to no man. No disrespect to TD, but I want – he done had his shine. It's my time to shine. I'm already mad because you drafted me 51st. Like this didn't have this issue was bigger than T D. This issue was bigger than anybody. I'm mad you drafted me 51st. I walked out of your meeting because it was too late and y'all already had three, y'all had three thousand yard backs on your on on your roster. And you go and draft me. So You say you walked out of the meeting. I walked out, I'm like, man, y'all wasting my time. Y'all not drafting me. Now that's the combine or at the, the That's at the combine. Mm. Man, y'all not drafting me, man. Like Y'all got 3,000. Terrell, Mike Anderson, Orlando yeah. Segari. Mm. What y'all talking to me for? You talk about that chip on your shoulder, and with having that chip on your shoulder, like you said, I know I rubbed people the same, the wrong way. What did that chip on that shoulder, what did it look like? Because if you walked in with that heavy chip on your shoulder, I've seen some things. I've even had a chip on my shoulder when I tore my Achilles. But what did that look like? In the form of you going out there doing your job or just letting everybody know, I'm not a 51st pick. You made a mistake and I'm going to show you. It was like, knock it off. You know what I mean? Like, knock it off. You see the chip on my shoulder, you don't like my attitude, knock it off. Do something about it. You know what I mean? And that's just one of those mindsets that I'm going to compete. You know what I mean? Even when it comes, people always say, oh, well, you were the best blocking back in the game. But blocking... Like, no one gives you credit for blocking. You see what I'm saying? Some of the better backs in the game now, they come out when it's time to block. I wanted that smoke. I'm looking for when I no, used to you see you. Did. When I used to see you walking to that to the A gap and y'all sending and a double blitz. To, you used to flinch. Yeah, flinch to try to get the jump. So when you step up and I'm knowing you, I know y'all coming. Y'all never walked into the, sent the double A gap blitzes without coming. Without it coming. wasn't no disguise. I knew it wasn't a disguise. I watched enough tape to say, if they walk up, they coming. I, I'm looking at you in your eyes like, shit, you in trouble. <laughs> like, you run through here, you want to. I know what time it is. You ran through. 
I loosen up your chin strap. <laughs> knock, <laughs> knock, out, knock out your mouth. No, you fucking <laughs> lying, <laughs> Listen, bro. We got to Where is this film, though, dog? No, we're going we to we put it on when the, show, when the show go out. We're going to put you it on. Bro, you know really? how many times Spikes helped me up? Now, you know, in the game of football, right. opponents don't help each other. Nah, I ain't never person. help you. I ain't never hey. help nobody up. Man, Spikes used to be the Bruh. first person. I, man, stop. Don't Bruh. give me your damn it's man. Too, I don't I even went, like you right have now. Have you ever been through a 2-14 and 14 season? No. Why well, would I, I help you up? Man, I, I'm trying to demolish you, bro. I felt the same way. Like, I, and I demolish you. I, with, with the Bengals, I demolish Nick, you. You had a hundred. You know what? You played us. Probably when my father died, and I, that was the only game I missed in Cincinnati. No, you was on the field. No, we played against each other in, in, in Philly. We played against each other when you was in Cincinnati, Spikes. I used to like you. Like, honestly, <laughs> when you were at Auburn, you were one of my favorite players. I used to like you. I thought you was a good back. So when I played against you, and I'm playing against Corey Dillon, that was my challenge. Early, My early years – it was playing against the back. I didn't right, even right, right. see the see defense. defense right. It was if I'm playing Corey Dillon or Ladanian Thompson or Priest Holmes, like it's on and popping. Yeah, you that see was what your saying? motivation. I don't care what. I don't. The hell with the defense. You see what I'm saying? Like my issue is I'm gonna be the best back on this field, and I'm looking at Corey Dillon. Corey Dillon was a dog. You talking oh, about beast. underrated? Yeah. You That's too underrated. You see what I'm saying? Like I'm I'm looking at man Corey Dillon on the other side. I got to get off today. Yeah. So when I look at Spikes, when I look at uh, – y'all had the D-line in. Y'all had the boy from Florida State. Um, Bernard Wilson. Yeah, y'all had the D-line. Y'all, yeah. y'all, had a, y'all had a good defense. And this is the other thing. When you look at all the best defenses throughout my career, you look at all the best defenses that didn't give up 100-yard backs, guess who broke? The Vikings, the Bills, uh, the Jaguars, the Eagles – you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Guess who had 100 yards against him? But you didn't get the credit. You don't get that attention. People don't say, oh, well, the Jags hadn't given up a 100 yard back in 30 games. Clint Porter's do it. The Dallas Cowboys haven't given up 100 yards rushing. Clint Porter's do it. Chicago Bears, Brian Urlacher in that defense, no 100 yards rushes. Clint Porter's do it. You see what I'm saying? You just don't get that credit. But you're cool with it. Like, I can't make you go and say, Hey, CP good. And maybe it's the fact that I always felt like CP good that people don't want to give me the credit. They didn't acknowledge it, huh? Yeah, because I acknowledge it myself. So, you know, people always say, oh, don't pat yourself on the back. It's not patting myself on the back. That's just the competitor in me. And I got to talk, I got to speak it into existence. Because if I set the bar high, if I tell you I'm about to go kick ass and I don't kick ass, you're going to look at me like, oh, man. We're going to hold you accountable. Yeah, you holding me accountable for that. What about Hall of Fame? I, I looked at your numbers, and I'm yeah. not a person. I don't judge. Com, I don't judge players completely by numbers. I judge players by numbers and impact that they have while they were playing in the decade of the era. You mentioned Corey Dillon. Every team we played in the same era. Every team said the two best backs in the league that don't get a lot of credit. One of them was Corey Dillon. They understood why small market coming out of there. And then you, they always said, this guy, once he gets downhill, he will take it on the house. And by the way, he's a great blocker. If you had to make your case or your plea for the Hall of Fame, what would that what would that sound like? Man, I already did the work, you know. And if you look at that era, what players are getting – credit for it now you know 1250 1300 yards Mm -hmm. is the top back in the nfl and everybody praised him oh this kid is this kid is it's fantastic 1300 yards in in my era ball probably got you traded 1300 (laughs) because it wasn't respectable until you hit the like the 14 1500s bro you had priests running wild you had edge running wild you had marshall running wild you had ladanian running wild Mm -hmm. you had me fred t like that was an era of running backs that i don't think you get an opportunity to match you know what Mm -hmm. i mean like you're not gonna get another era um that that has that many talent uh tiki barber you see Mm -hmm. what i'm saying Mm -hmm. like you're not gonna get another era that you just, Sean Alexander, you know what I mean? Like every back is going berserk, going crazy because you knew you had to run the ball. So I'm constantly competing. It's no 
Warwick Dunn. You know what I mean? Like every time you're trying to compete just to get to the Pro Bowl, which I was slighted so many times. My yeah. numbers were better than the back subs in the Pro Bowl. But because Pro Bowl voting, voting is week 12 or week 13, right. you know what I mean? Like all the ballots are in week 13 or week 12 for Pro Bowl. And then my closeout, those last four weeks, I turn into a man child. All of a sudden, the ballots are already in. You know what I mean? So and don't you were the topic of a conversation that you're being snubbed because the ballots were already yeah, in. Yeah, but that's the issue. At the time that you vote, it's like, oh, this guy's this guy's hot, but then them guys disappear. And to finish out that season or to go on a run, you know what I mean? Like the runs that we went on in DC, um, to get to the playoffs, just alone, five consecutive hundred yard games over over defenses that wasn't giving up hundred yard, you know what I mean? Uh going to Seattle, having a hundred yards at Seattle. That's unheard of. To this day, you can't go to Seattle because that's a tough place to play. Um so just going into those environments, I think if you look at the tape, the impact on the game, knowing that this is the focal point, mm -hmm. it wasn't a surprise. It wasn't a surprise. It was this is the focal point. And the next thing that people judge you on is you look at games played, go games played and yards. All this, my last two seasons, which was 09 and 010, was some seasons that I would throw away. Both of them I got, I went to IR, you know what I mean? But you look from 02 to 08, ain't nothing like it. Heavy. Nothing like 1500, it. 1500, 1590, nothing, nothing like it. Nothing like it. Yeah, killing. So when, so when did, did it ever get to a point where you like, you finally felt like, damn, I'm getting my just due. I've been killing the league, shredding these defenses. Now, Clint Portis is getting his just due. It didn't because I was always getting, like I was always getting snagged. Even if you look at Pro Bowl, like I'm saying. I was always getting snagged for Pro Bowl and uh, somebody else was getting denied. And this, you know what I mean? For whatever reason it was. So it was never a time that you just said, I have arrived. The, yeah. the, the only year that I probably felt like I have arrived, which was like that slap in the face, is the moment I go from Denver to D.C. And it's like somebody finally realized my worth. And I think I had 1,300 yards. But I go from the AFC, which was scheme-oriented and balls to the wall, you just out running, to the NFC, which was physical, downhill. It, it's just like you saying, hey, you know what? There's a brick wall. Try to get through it. Yeah, we run a counter power every play. Stop. It. And they come. Yeah. You know what I mean? So at 205, my body was breaking down. Like, this physical. You know what I mean? Every play, you're getting hit. Every play. You got straight hand, Dawkins, uh, everybody. Them DNs that, that that the Cowboys had. You know what I mean? You got OCDM. Bro, it was so much talent in the NFC East alone. Just the physicality um, and, and having to play the NFC East schedule. And then our – out of conference schedule was always the Vikings, the Bears, the Bucks. And the Bucks had Derrick Brooks. You know what I mean? The Bears got Erlacher and, and Tommy Harris. Like that defense was crazy. crazy. And the Vikings uh -huh. had them Williams boys sitting there in the middle hated that wasn't them. giving up. Oh, Kevin you Pat, hated Kevin them. Williams. Pat. And, Pat. And, and then the Jaguars, for some reason, we playing the Jaguars and they had Henderson Stroud, and man. Stroud. Yeah. Like, bro, you sitting here like, damn, does it get any? Like, when do I get this cupcake team? When do I get this this thirty first or thirty second ranked? Because I know backs look at other backs and be like, "God, he got this matchup this week." So everybody had to look at me like, "Oh no, he can't." Hundred yards, hundred yards. So I don't even know if you really remember when I gave you a call and I was like, "Bro, before we started this podcast, I was like." Bro, let me tell, like, let me holler at my folk, man. I was like, dog, what you think? What you think about the concept? Before behind the mask was behind the mask, you were like, it's a no brainer, dog. You <laughs> like it's easy. He was like, bro, you know, you you gave me the pointers and everything, simply because you already had your podcast established, twenty six minutes, and I did not know you really enjoyed doing it as much as you do. Until I had that conversation with you, 
What is it that you like so much of the ability to be able to do with your podcast? So I think just having this platform, we have so many stories that, you know, corporate America don't really get the in-depth of the stories. They either, they either looking for the negative or they highlighting the positive. They don't understand the steps in between. You know what I mean? So I just think for me, having that platform was all about honesty because I feel like it's so much that's put out in the media is so untrue, but it's just to sell a story. You know, um, when you look at headlines, everything that come out in the media is headlines, headlines, headlines to get your attention. But then when you read the story, it's like, what the hell? You know what I mean? So for me, this platform was more of, hey, here's my opportunity to be honest, to talk in depth about things that's actually going on in life. You know what I mean? Like finding your niche. And I got a great co-host in Monica McNutt uh, and, and the crew that's behind that helps me uh, out with 26 Minutes. So it's all about the chemistry. You know what I mean? Like you and Toop got chemistry. Y'all know each other. Y'all know in-depth stories. You know what I mean? But the world don't know oh, man, me and Toot used to do this, or yeah. we used to go here. Like, they don't know your relationship before football. Like, they actually say, this my brother. You know what I mean? Like, this my like this my partner. Like, people that don't know you wouldn't be able to say, y'all crew, the usual suspects. Like, they going to come on the scene, everybody together. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Or the appreciation or the support or the love that you all show. So, for me, it's like those in-depth. You know what I mean? I had Edge on my show. And you know Edge don't do interviews. Right. You know what I mean? Hall of Fame. Hall Hard of Fame. To, Hall yeah. of Fame. Hall of Fame. James, yeah. I get to say, sure. This is my dog. You, you see what I'm saying? Like, I got Edge on the show. And after we finish, for Edge to give you credit, for Edge to give me credit, man, that was like, like, sign seal delivered. Like, yeah. oh, man, you good. Like, you be doing all that yourself? I'm like, yeah. He was like, man, that's cool. Like, I, I enjoyed that. You see what I'm saying? But it's it's real talk. It's an opportunity for you to tell your story. Like other yeah. people give you a portion of it. Other people give you like tidbits or, oh, this is the main thing that happened. They don't really give you the lead up. They don't give you like the film. You know, it's like right. movies when you used to sit down in Harlem Night. You know what I mean? Like if you think of Harlem Night, so you think of your favorite movie and they it's a build up, a build up and then it knock it down and you like, oh man, that's so good. And you go and watch it a million times compared to now you watch something, it's like you watch it one time, I don't wanna watch that again. You know what I mean? So giving you that that lead up, that build up to be able to tell your story. When you reached out, I'm telling you like, man, do it. Like you gonna have a good time. Y'all in Atlanta, everybody coming through. You know what I mean? Like y'all in, you in Atlanta, you got access to everybody. If people respect you, you see what I'm saying? They're going to come through. Look at the guests that you all have. Nobody would put you two on like, oh, look at look who's the guest on this show today. You know what I mean? Everybody think it's just football, football, football. That's all you know. Like, you know life. Like, you being in Alabama, it. you know what I mean? Like, you lived it. And, and then people get all the stuff that you see that people highlight and talk about. They don't get to say, oh, you know what? This guy never did drugs. This guy never got in trouble. This guy... Whatever the situation is, people just jump to the negative like you're a bad person. And they don't they don't really get you. You know what I mean? Like if I tell stories, hey, I used to take shots before the game. I didn't drink the rest of the week. Mm. I was taking a shot. Like, shit, I'm finna go battle. You know what I mean? Like right. this the arm, you know what I mean? Like that's a, a, a soldier on the battlefield. Whatever is gonna get me through the day. Like, I need to survive. I need to survive mm. the day to get to tomorrow. So my approach to, hey, I take a shot before the game, I know this is going to be physical. I know this is going to be tough, but I got to do it. I can't come out with no excuse. Like, it's task upon me to deliver. I go out and when I go out, you know what I mean, what what gets you feeling the music? So I take me a little sweet. I wasn't even drinking a lot. I take a shot. It was one shot. Boom, take the shot. Come on, let's go. You see what I'm saying? Kill it. But they'll make it, they'll make it like, oh, you were an alcoholic yeah, yeah, and yeah. oh, this guy has a problem. Right, right. I listened to stories of old people. They were doing cocaine. They was doing yeah, I in never, the 80s, they was at it. Bro, the Giants I ain't never even smoked weed before. 
38 years old, not one time, ne never puffed, like never tried it. No drugs. I don't take pills. I don't take, you know what I mean? Like, I don't. I don't do anything. But people wouldn't know that if mm -hmm. you didn't tell them. They look at you like, oh, that boy, wow, that boy crazy. Probably he does like, everything. Yeah. yeah, nothing. But you see how that sound, though. You know, like, <coughs> some, you tell somebody you, you take a shot before the game, they'll just yes, think sir. like, like, damn, you did what? Right. So imagine what you what you do when it's not before a game. Right. But imagine all the people that was really going in. <laughs> yeah, like, yes. imagine all the people, all the people that was really involved. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it came out, hey, Santana, Sean, and Clint was doing it. Mm. Santana, Sean, and Clint performed every week. Listen. I, did, did, hold on, real quick. To, to, to that point, though, you had guys that might, you know, might smoke a cigar or whatever, or, or, you know, particularly after the game, get in the parking lot, just kick it and chill. I was a rookie, man. I was with the Saints. I ain't going to say the dude's name, but I was like, what was it like to, you know, make the playoffs over, you know, in the 80s? What was it like to do this, do that? He's like, man, it was dope, man. You had everything afforded to you that you wanted, making the Super Bowl, making these playoff runs. I said, damn, so, I mean, everything? He said, everything. I said, everything? He said, yeah. I said, what's the worst thing you did? This man was like, yo, I, I did a line of coke. I said, what? <laughs> he said, like, before yeah. the Super Bowl, did a line of coke. I said, why? He said, I ain't like cocaine. I just like the smell of it. But see, Man, that's what? <laughs> How you? And, that's, it, that's but then, then they go, but this was the 80s and, and early 90s era of, of, of the league of what Cats was doing and balling out. Hell, LT but, came out and said what he was doing. Hey, LT, look at, you know look at the Cowboys. Look at the, the Cowboys, Cowboys era, yeah. the greatest supposedly like that greatest era offensive, uh, you know offensive yeah the and they line had the, they had the white house yeah they had the white house <laughs> well i tell you, you what, what I, I wish i could have got a taste of that white house now <laughs> i'm telling you boss. <laughs> <laughs> this is what crazy Yo, they they, yeah. they went in man but that's like that's the thing you didn't have the coverage you didn't have the, media. the social media social like, media yeah you didn't too, have yeah, yeah. Everything is so highlighted. You know, you look at social media and you think, oh, man, this, this person living like that. Bro, we used to fly from city to city to go to each other pool party. Like, Facts. what? Talk. Spike still yeah. having a pool party? Everybody yeah, coming. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Everybody coming. You see what I'm saying? Like, oh, CP got a pool party? Everybody coming. You know what I mean? And we didn't have social media and nobody got in trouble. You see what I'm saying? It, it wasn't no fights at Spike's pool party. It wasn't no nah. fights. At CP pool party, wasn't no security. We was chilling. Wasn't no security. We That's what I'm talking about. We used you to had fly a bunch of town people. to come to each other, yeah. bro. You had a bunch of people supporting each other, respecting each other. So it was a vibe. Whereas now, every time a group of people get together. It's something bad. It's the negativity. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's the only thing to come out. Or somebody. It's it's. A, here's my opportunity to sue you, for mm. whatever reason. You know what I mean? So. You don't even get the vibe no more. You don't get to, like, bro, you used to open up. Y'all used to open up y'all houses to all these people. Nobody was stealing the art. Nobody was stealing your money. Yep, like, yeah. nobody's stealing your jewelry. It was just a good time. I really think, and that's what I, I wish, and I do a lot of mentoring. I, I like to get the guys who are playing the game now. And I share those stories because until you brought it up, I truly forgot. We used to fly to different states intentionally mm -hmm. to support each other. You talk about the pool parties. You talk about the charity weekends. Everything was based off charitable. And we would throw events in to bring guys to, to come yeah, in town. Yeah. It's a charity weekend. That one day of charity that <laughs> benefit, you get three days to hang out. And it was the best three days. It was everybody. And you're in the community. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you're accessible to kids. I think that's what's missing in sports, though, because everybody go home. Yeah. At the end of the day, everybody go home. And when, the good teams are very close with each other. But what teams do you see that's good? You see what I'm saying? Like, uh, uh, Brown showed you that the Steelers, which if you're on the outside looking in, first off, you give Mike Tomlin all the credit in the world for being able to, to deal with the situation. But when Antonio Brown said, Ben Roethlisberger, don't hang with us. He looked down on us. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you would have thought that was the closest team in the NFL for the success that they was having, for the players that they were developing. But all of a sudden, when it comes out, 
Like this team ain't who you thought they were. You see what I'm saying? So you don't even have that in sports. Like guys don't everybody is individuals. Like nobody is hanging out. Like let me let me it's go and form a, a usual suspects crew. Like every when you see E somewhere, you see me. That's a fact. You see what I'm saying? Like or you see Reggie, you see Reed, you know, like I see you, here come Los, here come two. Y'all coming. That's how y'all roll. But now you see players, oh, I'm with somebody I don't know. Like, who is that? Like, oh, nice to meet you, man. You know what I mean? Like, right. every, you're you're constantly with somebody new. I don't know them people. I don't know them people. Nah, that's real talk, bro. But listen, before we let you go, bro, we got to ask you one question. If you had one chance to lace the, to lace the cleats back up, in your prime, and you get to pick that one quarterback or that one fullback, that one player to play with you out of any decade, who would that one player be and why? Sean T. Uh, that, that's a no-brainer for me. It would be Sean Taylor. I think we brought out a competitiveness in each other that after his demise, I mean, after his death, I never, like, I never got that. Again, you see what I'm saying? Like, I never had that competitive fire that I had while playing with him. You see what I'm saying? Like, that accountability that when we're walking out the tunnel, when we're walking down this hallway, and I'm saying, like, bro, you know this on us, right? And, and Santana come out of the locker room, and it's me, Santana, and Sean, and we walking. And it's like, bro, we got to win this game, you know. And you got Chris Sam. You had a lot of other guys that was contributing. But it's going to be on us to win this game. And me and Sean used to argue about who going who gonna to knock somebody out. and You know what I mean? Like, people don't understand where this blocking mentality came from. You know what I mean? Like, I'm arguing with Sean Taylor. Like, man, I'm going to knock me out. You know what I mean? And Sean, like, no, I'm finna knock. I seen Sean try to knock Andre Johnson out. He was That's his teammate. Bro, after we had a conversation, like, Sean was like, oh, Dre, how's your mother? <laughs> like, yeah, everybody good. The family good. Eric, you know? And brrr, I'm like, Sean, you got a problem with Dre? Dre looking at CP, what's wrong? Dre laying on the ground saying, CP, what's wrong with him? <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said, man, he crazy. Like, he crazy for real. You know what I mean? So, you just don't get, you don't get that competitive edge, you know. And Ed Reed was another guy like that that I I had the opportunity to compete against all the time in college. And I'm talking about everything we did. It was me against Reed, and you don't realize that competition because it go from on the field to the gym to the track. To whatever we doing, we competing. Like, we love each other, but we ain't doing nothing together. Like, me and you can't be on the same team. Like, you be a captain, I'm a big captain. It can't be no, oh, Reed, who you get? Okay, I got CP. No. Negative. We ain't on the same team. Uh -huh. Like, no, nah, that ain't going to happen. So just having, having those kind of competitive guys, you know, um, Playing with Reed, playing with Sean, who I think he got to be two of the top three safeties of all time, if not one and two. Yeah. I throw running a lot in there, but that's it. It would definitely what, be Sean. What, what made him so good though? Because a lot of people I I saw Finn played against him. What was the thing like? If you could sum it up in a nutshell, when you talk about Sean, what made him stand out from all the other safeties? Bro, Sean Mentality. was crazy. Sean was like, bro, I, so we were on the plane. We were on the plane, and, you know, me and Tanner sit together, and Sean sat behind us, and I get up to go talk to Sean, and Sean tell me, man, have you heard this new album? And I'm like, heard what new album? He had a little CD player. He used to walk around with a little, little gray CD, a CD player. CD player? Yeah. Boy, you dating your CD. You old as hell. He had, he had a CD player. Coming to here mm -hmm. with that Beijing all Look. on and everything. <laughs> no, 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 no. 
<laughs> nah. So Sean had the CD player. He said, man, you heard this new album? And I'm like, what new album? You know, we listen to No Limit and listen to Boo and and uh, T.I. and, you know, Troy. And I put on Sean headphones and he hit play. And it was T-Pain. T-Pain. Buy you a this drink. Is what, buy you a drink. This is what Sean is listening to. Buy you, let me buy you a drink. <laughs> and a I'm, bro, I'm so shook. I go sit down, tell him like, man, what's wrong with you? <laughs> and I'm like, dog, go back there and listen to what, like, go back there and see what Sean listening to. And he was like, what he listening to? I said, man, go back there and see what he listened to. And Santana came back and he had that same look that I had. I said, dog, that boy is crazy. <laughs> Like he he really listening to T Pain like he on the plane. Hey, it's going in. Hey, hey C P this going in, man. I'm telling you, this what well, this album so good. And I'm like, bro, I got I got T I trap music. You know what I mean? I like, I'm listening to Jeezy, everybody. Yeah, but this boy listened to T Pain. And it was one of those mentalities. Uh Santana asked me one day, like, man, who BMW always be be in the parking lot? I said, man, that Sean car. He said, why you leave his car up here? I said, bro, he jogged home uh. from practice. He jogged to and from work every day and leave his car at the facility. And if if he, this is the time that Baby Jacket was born. So if he needed, if if he wasn't going to jog, then he called Jackie so her and Baby Jackie can p- come pick him up, but his car's still sitting in the parking lot. That's how crazy he was. And Damn. you're not going to find a more unique individual. You know what I mean? Like, all he, f- football was life. Like, I remember having a conversation th- that year in 2007. I said, Sean, man, you, you about to get paid. He said, CP, like, man, I don't play this game for money. Like, I'm not worried about money. I just love this game. Like, I'm trying to get better, man. I'm like, you're trying to get better. <laughs> like, I'm I just trying saw to get the bag. bag. I, I just saw you with an opportunity to pick off Brett Favre where you covered the entire field, sideline to sideline, was his responsibility. In the NFL, that's either cover two or cover four. Mm-hmm. And you portion that up or cover three. And you portion that up. We had single high safety that was responsible for sideline to sideline. Never be done again. Never be done again. Single high safety. Damn. We gonna drop the mic on that one, bro. One more thing before we let you go real quick, man. So you you brought it up earlier. Me, Spice Lowe's, usual suspects. Uh, Obviously you, Edge, Tanner, Andre, y'all, y'all, you know, y'all representing the U. Spikes and I, we done went down, went back, you know, we got our got our masters from Miami. We had to go down to Coral Gables to get some of that sun to get our our masters and uh, you know, graduate. So technically, even though it's grad school, we graduated from the U. So I wanted to ask on a behind a mask podcast, can we finally say? That we are honorary members of the U. Can we throw the U up? No, nobody Damn. talks about grad school, man. Man, what's going on? Nobody talks about grad school. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have my degree and I claim the U all the time. I don't have no, oh, man, I got a degree from the U. Nobody talks about grad school. But this, this is what's crazy. I don't even know if you all remember this, but this is what's crazy. We were all in grad school together, right? Do you remember... I tutored, I helped you all out and was tutoring you all for a test. Do you remember this? Lowe's, Spikes, two, me. We were sitting off in the hotel downstairs, Mm -hmm. and I'm helping you all out to understand this test. It was math or something, right? I'm waiting to it. it, it, Go ahead. I'm telling you, this is how you're going to remember. I tutored you all to help you all understand how to do this test. We go and take the test, and y'all had a better grade on the test than I did. You don't remember that? After I tutored you. No, I don't. 
I, 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 I don't remember that. I got convenient amnesia on that one. Bro, I tutored y'all that. So what was the hotel we were staying at in Coral Gables? I forgot the name of it. Yeah, but you, we I were remember, down. I remember that, yeah. We it was were in downstairs, the lobby. We in were the downstairs lobby. in that room, and Tommy too. Tommy was down there. Los, none of us, no one understood how to do it. I showed you all how to do it and broke it down because the dude was talking over our head. I remember. I showed you. I was ready to roast you just then, but no, I remember though. See? Because he was going through like way too many steps. And I cut them steps for y'all. Yeah. I I I give you credit. I give you credit. That's all I'm saying. That's all. So again, to me, it's amazing. That you all even got a degree, because I didn't think y'all were that smart. <laughs> I, I just didn't think y'all were that smart. Like, oh, man. Oh, man. Hey, bro, man, we, we appreciate you stopping by, man. You could have spent your time any way you want to. Actually, we don't spend it together. I'm going to make sure. But uh, thanks for coming out, bro. Sure. Supporting no the problem, podcast. Man. Hey, no problem, man. Appreciate y'all having me on. And much success, man. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Behind the Mask Podcast. Indulge, share, and subscribe to quality content. And we're everywhere. We're on YouTube. Make sure you scroll to the bottom. Click that little bell for notifications. We're on Google Play. We're on Spotify. And we're on Apple Music. Even on social media, we're going to make it easy for you. Follow at the BTM Podcast for your weekly fixings. And remember, there's only one rule. There are no rules. Let's go Behind the Mask. mask.